welcome to Talking Out Align. Today's episode is going to be about us, our team at Talking Out Align, giving you an intro on why this show came into being and sort of its background and all of the cool stuff that you have to look forward to when it comes to the episodes that are to follow with the amazing guests from different industries. I'm Dr. Fadia Nordvit, and I wanted to say hello and welcoming you to the first episode with my co-producers, Aidan Fitzpatrick and Alberto Martinez. So we are going to be speaking about each of our roles in coming up and creating this show and bringing it out to you all. And going behind the scenes a little bit, uh, reflecting on the themes, the topics, and why this show exists. Um, so we're going to speak about the ways in which the show came together and um, the reasons why the show um, is divided into the different episodes and the industries and the sort of nitty gritties that make it what it is. Okay, so let's start the conversation with a bit of a Q&A from my co-producers. Perfect. Yeah, I'll take it away. Um, Fadia, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the show came to be? So this show came into being a few years ago when I wanted to create a project that is putting out the issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging to the American public and, of course, internationally, as this is going to be a streamed multimedia project, um, which is driven by data and also has personal um, experiences built into it. So it took me a while to think about the structure because I wanted it to not be only about personal experiences, but I also didn't want it to be just dry data thrown at you about uh, issues of uh, DEIB that is happening in the United States. So um, uh, my co-producers and I, we came up with this idea that it can't, it shouldn't, doesn't have to be one or the other. We thought that it would be a good idea to just combine the two and come up with a structure where we have uh, data that is based on the industries that we are picking, based on the episodes um, of Talking Out Online, followed by amazing um, uh, interview, which has a lot of personal reflections and um, uh, based on someone's career in the industry on, in focus. And it ultimately turned out to be a really rewarding experience because we were really able to highlight um, different industries in the United States and the ways in which they're experiencing and living out issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Awesome. And Fadia, why did you want to focus on the United States instead of going internationally? Well, the goal would be eventually to go internationally, but I don't think you can do internationally in one show without really getting deep into the United States, which is a really big country to begin with. It's big enough that I'm focusing on all different industries within the United States, which is such a big country that we live in. Um, if we wanted to include globally, then it would really sort of dilute the matter and each country around the world have their own context and their own histories. And I did not want to generalize on issues such as diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because I'm sure that the issues of uh, DEIB in France looks really different from India, and the issues of DEIB from India looks really different from the United States. So I wanted to create as much of a deep experience as possible by focusing on this already very big country called the United States of America. Uh, yeah, so like you said, you know, we do at least 12 industries throughout the show. What prompted you to get such a wide range of views for DEIB? So as we know, uh, people who have been clued in into this topic of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging um, in the United States in the last few years, especially with the ways in which this topic has heated up with the uh, with the a horrific incident of George Floyd that happened in 2020, uh, which led to uh, the lighting up of the movement of Black Lives Matter in ways uh, that it hasn't been brought into the forefront uh, in the past. A uh, lot of people started talking about issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging through anti-racism, through structural racism, and all of these terms that the media was using either favorably or controversially. And um, the reason for focusing on different industries was to show 
because uh, was to show and emphasize and uh, as the episode conversations revealed and the data that we show revealed that very similar statistics and problems are going on in very different industries in the United States. It seems that the basic problem is structural racism. It is uh, structural inequalities through different uh, identity groups that is actually preventing us from really realizing uh, all of the rights that we have as, uh, as uh, those living in the United States. So it's important for us to understand that the show's focus on different industries is not to dilute uh, the nuances of each industry. It is actually the opposite. It is to bring and highlight the ways in which we are uh, from different industries facing very similar challenges to bring into focus the importance of us to really address the root of the problem, which is very structural, and that it's not unique and random to some people in some unique industries. Instead, what it's showing me through the conversations and the data that we find is that very similar experiences and very similar problems are emerging structurally that are permeating through different people's lives and experiences and livelihoods. Awesome. To follow that up, it's, you know, we've heard about how the show came into being, why you wanted to focus in different industries, but the real question is, why do you care about the DEIB? Why was this the focus of your show? So there's a couple of different answers to this, but I think for the purpose of uh, uh, the real turning points in my life, my PhD has been in sustainability and communication with uh, and uh, <clears throat> with a focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging uh, in a more indirect way. And then as I uh, finished my PhD, wrote my book, and then got into my uh, professional career post my doctorate, I realized that my uh, expertise and interest in climate change and sustainability is really cannot be solved without having solved the issue of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. As the uh, sustainability episode that we have uh, tells us, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging problems is the core problem of issues of sustainability. Who climate change affects has a lot to do with uh, which identity group and which uh, income group we belong to and where we live and how it uh, disproportionately affects us. And for some people, uh, climate change is a non-issue because we have very privileged uh, um, uh, situations where some of us do not really feel the effects of it. So again, the core of the sustainability problem is really a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging problem. And more and more, I have learned to understand that this is my journey of wanting to work on the issue of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging across different industries. Because when you try and solve structural problems, that's when we'll have some solutions and hope for multiple industries in, uh, in, in the United States and of course, globally. And another very personal uh, reason for starting this show was uh, a few years ago, I was in a workplace and I had really bad experiences right out of graduate school. And I was actually very surprised, hurt, taken aback, and of course felt a lot of emotions about all of the bad experiences. And I wanted to create a platform and a show that actually brings that into focus and explores the issues that people face and ways and give hope to viewers about ways in which you can overcome uh, the challenges that people can face in their work experiences and uh, as cliched as this as this may sound and feel that they're not alone in it it's not unique it's structural and that we all can collectively work together to not only make our lives better but our co-workers and our neighbors and our communities' lives better so with the show dropping now uh, what do you hope talking out a line of cheese? Well, I hope it achieves what everyone who's coming up with the multimedia show uh, achieves, which is a lot of people watch it, a lot of people spread it, a lot of people interact with it, and a lot of people uh, let me, uh, Aiden, and uh, Alberto know uh, if there are places where we can spread this to, go ahead and go and have a conversation about, spread the word, have interviews, um, make people inspired to make their own versions of Talking Out of Line, do some collaborations to make a bigger, better, shinier, flashier, more, um, more uh, well-networked version of Talking Out of Line. So there's lots of hopes and dreams. So if you guys um, have ideas, have thoughts and comments on your favorite episodes, on how you want to collaborate or 
work with us or create some uh, amplification of our project, please feel free to reach out and uh, spread the word. So um, I wanted to now flip the uh, flip the questioning, folks, because I want to ask my very able Gen Z uh, co-producers, uh, Aiden Fitzpatrick and Alberto Martinez. So first, Aiden, I'd like to ask you, what were some surprises for you in uh, being part of this show? And what were some memorable or maybe even challenging moments that I'd like to know um, for the guests to sort of figure out your experience being a Gen Z athlete, white male, who's working on this uh, topic of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, being an athlete my whole life, um, you know, there's, in sports, it's not until recent you hear of athletes uh, talking of social injustices, you know, social issues, and also being a white male, learning my privilege, learning the role I have in the social inclusion, equity, and belonging, within everything that's what the show has um has opened my eyes to and there's a lot of work to be done but um working you know there's something on the show for everyone great thank you so much Aiden so what about you Alberto so uh what are your moments and or highlights challenges realizations while uh working on this show being the research producer so like Aiden said the show has something to teach everyone one thing I realized about myself is that as a Latinx student, I didn't realize how many microaggressions I would undergo on a day-to-day -day basis until I started working on the show and I started seeing other people's experiences. Whenever I go to visit family in Mexico, one of the biggest questions is, what are your experiences with racism? Or what are your experiences with people treating you different because you're an immigrant? And it didn't really click until I started working on the show and I started doing research and learning so much about different fields that I started to realize the amount of work that this country needs to do. So one of my favorite episodes was the law, law enforcement episode with uh, Javier Luengo Garrido because he talks about those problems that you know I have undergone and he talks about really interesting topics about how he's trying to convey change in his community. Yeah, I thought that that was a really interesting episode and I was really uh, grateful to Javier for having that conversation because there's so much about law enforcement and the details that I don't know. And uh, through that conversation, I felt like I really understood the difficult work that is going on in the United States when it comes to this. And some people are really working on it in a much more charged environment than us making a show. So, um, Aiden, tell us a little bit about your highlights of data or any kind of um, uh, reflections on the episodes. Uh, that which one did you relate to and or thought was really interesting? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, a couple of my favorites was uh, Gamification with Perry Clemens and his Inequalityopoly, which is very engaging, fun, but also probably probably one of the episodes I learned actually the most on, you know, his um, data-driven take on monopoly and race was was definitely something very cool and i think that everyone should check out and the amazing work that alifa hawk is doing within sustainability i thought was really awesome as well sounds good so for me uh without having uh without having to sound cliched i felt that um all the episodes had something to offer and i see uh that the importance of having people from very different industries uh, come together, because as I said in the beginning of this interview, that that was one of the more discouraging things, but also the important thing that I wanted to highlight through the show, that really it is a structural problem. It's not a unique random experience that all of us are having. And it's really important and was one of the reasons why I came up with the show to actually have a place that we can see that in entirety, that it's not random, it's data driven and we are putting it out there and we got data from really good sources. Alberta did a great job in gathering information from well-regarded uh, sources that are all available to the public in our website. And whatever is not available on our website, you can feel free to reach out to us and we will send you the links to the data sources where we got the data from. Uh, because that we take it very seriously in talking out of line to make it a, a clean, anti-fake news, 
uh, operation. So we are coming across uh, challenges of finding a lot of videos and uh, multimedia in the internet that are not properly verified from good sources of data. But we made sure in Talking Out of Line to bring to the audience reliable, credible information and sources, uh, which was one of the main uh, building stones of this uh, project. And so, so thank you very much, Alberto, for helping in the process of that. And thank you very much, Aiden, for uh, doing the segments on data with me and also um, in doing the amazing editing job that you have done to bring all of the work together, which took hours and hours of work to make it look great. And of course, uh, we hope that all of you will go to our social media pages and leave comments, spread the word, spread the link and reach out to us. And we are happy to talk about the show and can and come and speak at your events uh, when it comes to um, amplifying uh, work that is on social justice and diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging. Thank you all for watching. And we hope that you enjoy the 12 episodes that we are going to be releasing uh, on various different fields in the United States. All right. Thank you all.